Welcome back everybody, this is Brother Mutant here. Today we are doing a specific build uh, that I promised apparently a while ago and totally forgot about. I do apologize, we've been extremely busy as you guys know. Uh, we are doing an unmodded video. For those of you that are not playing on PC, this is a perfect opportunity for you to have some serious fun. Someone asked me to make a fighter uh, that specialized in crossbows and see what I could come up with. It's actually pretty easy for an unmodded build. I mean, there's not a whole lot of right answers. There's not a whole lot of wrong answers either. So basically you just get yourself a good crossbow, Decide if you're going to go heavy or light, light being the best in my opinion, and while you may say, oh, the heavy crossbow does more damage, yes, but there's not very many good ones in the game, and again, I'll show you that as well. We are doing unmodded, but that doesn't mean I'm not using mods, I'm using bag of tricks so I can power level a character up. Hair and locker, that doesn't mean squat, same with highlight learnable scrolls, that's not going to apply to you either. So none of this is going to affect your gameplay. Just the bag of tricks is being really used here to gift ourselves the best weapons and gear so I could show you what you could be capable of as well as uh, types of items that I'd look for. As well as, of course, force leveling your character up. Maybe even summoning a monster or seven so we can shoot a couple and show you what this is capable of actually doing. Okay, so let's actually get into it. All right, let's see. I have a character already made at level one where he's been leveled to 20. It's this guy right here. I'll we'll walk through you uh, what we did for level one, and then we'll go into the leveling process. Uh, the obvious thing to do, since you're going to go purist fighter, is going to be to go for a next base build. Because remember, crossbows have absolutely nothing to do with strength. They have everything to do with your dexterity for hitting a target. While that doesn't mean you don't want strength, because again, you're going to be carrying gear, you're going to be wearing armor. So that's going to be a thing. So let's actually look at our character. Uh, know that he starts off uh, with a strength of 12. Dex of 18, Con of 16, Intelligence of 13, 10 for Wisdom, 10 for Charisma. All generic as far as the lower level stuff. The Intelligence being an odd number allows me to put one point into Intelligence to get extra skills, as you'll see. And then we'll dump the other four points into Dexterity just uh, from start to finish at that point. To finish with a solid Dexterity of 22. Uh, that's going to be a very decent armor class for your character wearing armor that of course can benefit that sort of Dexterity bump. And then, of course, we will capitalize on extra dexterity from gear. So that's going to, uh, again, bring you up and over the top. Now, the question is going to be is, are you, since you are a fighter and you can uh, wear robes, light armor, medium armor, and heavy armor, do you want to go heavy armor? And honestly, I would actually say yes. Uh, it depends. I'll show you a laundry list of armors that we can choose from. But as far as the character himself, for just a one-level fighter, uh, we literally invested in rapid shot, Precise shot, and of course with our free combat feat for being a fighter, we've got point-blank shot. So really right at level one, you're able to shoot two times with a crossbow. And again, it doesn't matter which crossbow we're talking about, you're shooting twice. And again, I mean, we could just as easily switch over to a bow, long bow, a short bow, composite uh, long bow, etc. and so forth. We have no specialty yet, so to speak. Uh, so again, any weapon that a fighter would be skilled in, which is all simple in martial weapons, which would include the ones I just listed, would be a solid, solid choice. So just because I say grab a crossbow now doesn't mean that's going to be your thing. Wait till you get to old legs and I'd say pick up the first mass work light crossbow you can. And again, you may say, well, if I get a composite longbow, I'll get a plus one to my damage. Sure, you can, but it's really not that big of a deal in my opinion. And again, might as well start uh, getting used to the idea that the crossbows are going to be your thing. Because when we get down to here for weapon training, you have to decide between bows and crossbows. And this was a crossbow build. Now I'm going to go again light crossbow because again there are more of them in the game. We'll show you that once we get to level 20. Uh, but uh, when it comes to skills, know that I invested in. Uh, well, here let's actually just get to level two. I'll show you what I'm talking about. It's easier this way. Uh, so when we talk about our bonus combat feats and all the other stuff we're going to get, uh, that's going to be important. But here let's walk you through this. Notice that we're getting about three points when we get to this one here. We're going to get to four at every round or every level up. So we're going to get some, some backdated ones, uh, skills, uh, when we get to an intelligence of 14, which would be the first point you invest in, in my opinion. And then allow you to really level up the, the four things you have check marks in here. So athletics, knowledge world, lore nature, and persuasion, all the way to 20, if you so choose. I'm not choosing to do that, because of course perception, as you know, is highly useful. This is not necessarily a solo build, and I would never recommend it as a solo build, since you're going to be relying on armor to keep yourself alive. You don't have spells. You'll do good damage, don't kid yourself. It's just you're really not going to be able to tank as effectively as, say, a, a caster with, with all the different buffs that they can slap on themselves. So I'm going to get perception all the way up to, to, to maximum. So it'll go to 20 before too long. And then from there, uh, you need to decide uh, for the ones that we're still going to invest in. Three can go to 20. 
one will go to, or sorry, two will go to 20, uh, two will go to 10. So you need to decide that now. I recommend that athletics be the one that goes to 10 and probably uh, either persuasion goes to 10 or knowledge world goes to 10. Be really good at Lord Nature because again, you are that guy. I mean, it really kind of makes sense that that would be the thing you would focus on as a crossbow when someone knocks out in the woods all the time. But again, on you, pick, pick two to go to 20, two to go to 10, and then of course, perception is definitely going to 20, okay? Uh, from here, uh, we could uh, really double down right now and get that weapon focused for um, like crossbow or heavy crossbow if you so choose. Uh, the feats that I'm picking for you come from a massive list. So let's actually read the whole list and we'll tell you where things are going to change. So we've already got point blank shot, precise shot, rapid shot. Deadly aim is going to be the one we're actually going to pick up now because why not do more damage? Uh, and again, it's only plus two, you may say, that that's not really that impressive. Uh, but it rapidly turns into plus four, plus six, plus eight before the end of the build will be plus 12. That's not bad. Improved initiative. Again, you do want to shoot first. And even if it's a surprise round, you definitely want to be able to get a shot off. So again, having a nice initiative is extremely helpful. Dodge is going to be something that I figured, what the hell? We have an extra uh, a feat that we can pick since the fighters get so many. Let's give it a little extra armor. Weapon focus. Of course, we talked about that. And weapon specialization, the thing that follows weapon focus. That's, again, a plus one to your swing thanks to weapon focus and a plus two to your damage with said weapon. So that's not bad. Again, another upgrade for the amount of damage you put, uh, dish out with that crossbow. Uh, we're going to even go point blank master for light crossbow. And why that one? Because again, we can't guarantee that your teammates are going to be able to keep the bad guys off you. Uh, again, you're the team leader. And again, if you have uh, turn-based combat, it's pretty easy to keep things at a distance, but it doesn't mean it's always going to be the case. So I'd rather have that where I know that I could be uh, up and in their face, pulling out that crossbow and shooting them at point blank range without having to worry about attacks of opportunity. I just find that extremely helpful and it's easy for a fighter to get. So I figured what the hell. Uh, then the next two are gonna be kind of, you don't have to get them, but I recommend them. So that's the greater weapon focus and greater weapon specialization. And again, these are not in order necessarily here guys. Uh, but those two are important because again, a bonus to your swing for the weapon that you're always gonna be using. And then a greater weapon specialization, a bonus to your damage for the weapon that you're always gonna be using. So now you're up to a plus two to your swing and a plus four to your damage. Again, you can see the appeal. Improve critical for said weapon. Again, why not have it crit more often than not? On that, uh, we could also do things like critical focus. Uh, and if we do something like that, that gives us like a plus four to our crit potential, um, uh, as far as confirming a crit, I should say. But it also unlocks the ability to grab uh, specific critical feats like blinding critical, tiring critical, exhaustive critical, things of this nature. And that may be something that we lean heavy into because I have a couple other feats that I'm probably gonna drop along the way. Other stuff that shows up that could be of interest to me, things like clustered shots, blind fight, and I know you'd be like, well, blind fight isn't that specifically for, and that's this guy right here, that's specifically for melee. Yes and no, yes, it's for melee, uh, but notice this part here. Um, at the very end here, you also gain immunity to gaze attacks. That's extremely important in this game, uh, especially at the very end of the game without ruining it for you. That's an extremely valuable thing for you to have. And again, the fact that invisible attackers don't get advantage to you when they're trying to hit you in melee. Remember, we're going to be point blank master. So you will be in melee as far as they're concerned. You're not just meleeing them is the problem. You're actually shooting them with a bow. So it does help more than you think. It's just not amazing. But we also want to grab, uh, for example, improved precise shot. That's going to be amazing for you. Cluster shots will be amazing for you. Again, we already talked about the various criticals, like blinding critical will be amazing for you. Now, the, the ones... Uh, that I have at the very end here. So we have Hammer the Gap, Penetrating Strikes, Greater Penetrating Strikes, I, I believe are all valid. Uh, and while Hammer the Gap looks like, let me show it to you, I believe it's down. Uh, it's probably hidden. Hammer the Gap, where are you at, you little cougar? So right here. Um, you repeatedly strike the same location, causing increased amounts of damage. It says when you make a full attack, it doesn't say anything about being a melee attack. So I believe this does work, and I have tested this one, where it literally does more damage, more damage, more damage. It's not amazing, but again, we're talking about it. You hit them once, then you follow up with a second hit, and now you get a plus one to your damage. You follow up with a third hit, you get another bonus to damage. So again, you get stacking amounts of damage. So you again, the consecutive hits, that's a key here, because you really can't miss. If you miss one, then it resets the clock, so to speak. So you really wanna hit, 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 and if you do so, each subsequent hit gets more damage from the previous number of hits before it. 
which is really nice. So you go up from, from nothing, or normal damage, I should say, to a plus one to your damage, then plus two to your damage, then plus three to your damage, and you get the idea. It just continually stacks and gets better, better, better. And again, if you have something like Rapid Shot, which is giving you an extra hit, that's awesome. And then if you get something like um, a Speed Weapon or Haste, for example, cast on you where you get an extra attack, that's awesome. Because again, more attacks, assuming that you continue to hit, is a bonus to your damage output. So that's a really, really nice increase. It's not amazing, but it is there, and I do appreciate it. And that's a solid upgrade. Uh, penetrating strikes and greater penetrating strikes, I believe, work. Uh, and uh, the reason I say believe, let me show you penetrating strikes. Um, literally, it says uh, attacks made with weapons selected with weapon focus, which we will have weapon focus in light crossbow. We should be able to ignore five damage. It doesn't say anything about it being melee, so I believe that that's accurate. And if that's the case, that's really amazing. And you may say, well, do I really need that since I'm already going to grab, uh, what is it called? Let's see, uh, clustered shots. This one here. Where if you do a full attack, uh, multiple ranged weapon attack against the same opponent, they total all the damage before calculating the damage reduction. Yeah, but remember, damage reduction is still a thing. If I could take that damage reduction from, let's say, a 20 to a 10... Wouldn't you want to do that? I, I would think so. And that's why penetrating strikes and greater penetrating strikes are valid in my opinion. You don't need it. Cluster shots is easy enough to get. And if you're not feeling it, feel free to drop those two out and grab something else. Something that I did grab just to prove to myself, and I knew it didn't work, but I wanted to make sure that they didn't patch it in or something, is something called mini shot. Mini shot specifically says in the tooltip, and this is why the tooltips are important for the vanilla version of the game, they are pretty accurate. When it says with a bow, that's your clue that it is not a crossbow. When it says with a bow, this happens. A bonus to your attacks with a bow. A bonus to your damage with a bow. That really does mean short bow, long bow, uh, composite bows of those kinds. That's it. No crossbows. Okay, so if it said crossbow or just ranged weapon attacks, that's another thing you'll catch for gear. If it says ranged weapon attacks, then it really has to be a weapon that does ranged attack. Crossbow. Uh, we're talking um, javelins, we're talking throwing axes, anything that's a ranged weapon falls under that category. So again, those tooltips are accurate. But mini shot doesn't work. You need rapid shot, which no problem there. You need a base attack bonus of six, we can get that by level six, no problem there. But we are not using a bow, so we don't get the extra split off arrow. Okay, so don't waste your time grabbing that one. Uh, as such, that means I can cycle that one out and get something else, and I've yet to decide what to grab, but I pretty much have settled on things that are going to benefit me uh, as far as saving throws are concerned, or extra HP. You know, so toughness is a viable option, iron will, better reflexes, things of those natures is really what's going to sell us to being a, a decent character. So again, I'm going to start with Deadly Aim here, uh, and I'm fine with that. Notice we get this nice little bravery bonus, something that someone pointed out here. When we start getting our training, since we're going to focus on uh, composite bows, or sorry, crossbows, from here you'll get crossbows training, and then here, here, and here you'll just keep getting the same thing. So it's going to be a plus one to attack and damage, then plus two, plus three, plus four by the end, which is awesome. Then these ones up here, instead of specializing in other weapons, you know, like dipping into something else like a normal fighter would, we're saying, no, we're going to be married to that crossbow. That's going to be our thing for time and memorials. That allows us to grab a lot of different feats that are up here, one of which allows you to convert this bravery, this, this uh, bonus to your will saves, but only in purposes for saving against fear effects. It will actually be a bonus to fierce, uh, will, uh, will saves, period. And that's really, really nice. So instead of it being a plus five to saves against fear, it'll be a plus five to your will saves flat. And that'll be nice. And that'll be something we can pick up, I believe, here. And then a couple other really interesting ones that we might unlock up here that's kind of on you would grab. I'll show you those when we get to them. Notice something else. We get armor training as a fighter. And this allows us to not only uh, be not impeded by the armor as far as armor check penalties, uh, so things of that nature, but also movement's going to be less of a problem. Also, we can actually make um, the maximum dexterity bonus can go up all the way up to a plus four. So if it says max dexterity is low, a 1, now by the end of this build it can actually be a 5. And again, since we're a dex-based build, that means in full plate armor, you can actually have yourself a still solid dex-based uh, bonus to your armor class. 
which is pretty damn cool. One of the reasons you kind of like fighters. Notice even at the very end here, we get armor mastery, which we get a really nice damage reduction that's flat, so long as we're wearing any kind of armor, light, medium, or heavy. Of course, we're going to pick one of those. Notice at the very end, we get weapon mastery, which means we get to confirm critical threats guaranteed. That's awesome. And our multiplier for our weapon goes up by one. So that means instead of it being a times two crit, it's a times three crit. If it's a times three crit weapon, now it's a times four. You can see the appeal here. It's going to crit, and it's going to crit for a lot of damage. That's really, really nice for us. And again, pretty damn cool. Uh, other than that, the fact that we're just getting a boatload of feats is really what kind of makes this build solid. And of course, a high bab high hit points. Uh, from here, level three, let's just uh, keep pushing that nature and that perception, like we said. And again, which uh, are the two that we're going to uh, call ten? I said probably athletics, probably our, con our sorry knowledge world. So let's get that persuasion up to match in line. And then at this point, these ones will always go up, and then we'll just rotate between this one or that one, this one or that one, and that's always going to be what we do. Now, uh, I'm going to grab, at this point I think it's probably to our benefit to grab that weapon focus. Why not be really good at shooting that light crossbow? Like so. And again, you can actually see out here real quick just to show it to you you can see you're swinging pretty good you got two attacks still and you're only level what, we're three right now uh, we're swinging a solid uh, six and that's with rapid shot and deadly aim on so that's really really nice we're actually getting two arrows or bolts excuse me off very easy to do and a decent amount of damage as a result thanks to deadly aim so again we're not that impeded by our ability to shoot stuff and it does have a crossbow i will say it does have a nice crit range on it uh, so, you know, it's not the best, but it could be a lot worse. Fire level 4. Again, one point new intelligence, and that's really going to be where we catch up with some of these other guys. Okay, so now... Like so, and then like I said, we're going to rotate 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, just back and forth between those guys. Uh, at this point, you probably want to get weapon specialization, and again, I'm going to show you why by going to... So one available, we're going to scroll down and we're going to look for that point blank master. It requires weapon specialization and fighter level 4. So we could have had this sooner. If, for example, we had weapon specialization here, which means we'd have to push back deadly aim. So if you want this sooner than later, that's okay. I don't think it's that necessary because, again, you do have a team. Your team is still pretty good and they don't try to bum rush you that early in the game. But by the time you get to the Stagler, which is right around level 5, this could be a problem, and that's why, again, Point Blank Master is something that I would be interested in unlocking as soon as possible. There's Point Blank Master, my crossbow. Now here's your weapon training, your very first one. Now look at the laundry list that we have here. Again, it doesn't matter because we're just going to grab crossbows, but I want to show unavailable and show you the other feats that are coming our way. So here's Arm Bravery. This is where we apply our bravery bonus to all will saves. That's this guy here. That's going to be as soon as possible. Combat maneuver defensive. That's very nice as long as we're wielding the weapon of our weapon choice. In this case, crossbows. We have a bonus to our combat maneuver defense uh, equal to our weapon training. So we've got plus one, plus two, plus three, eventually plus four. That's not bad. Effortless dual wielding. That's not something we're going to do. Uh, we got fighter's reflexes, fighter tactics, and trained initiative. All these are solid choices. Um, Again, we're only going to get one, two, three things here. One of them is definitely armed bravery. The second one's probably going to be combat maneuver defenses, or at least one of the two. Uh, and then from there, we have to decide what we'd rather have. Tactics is not bad. Again, it does allow us to unlock some tactics, uh, which are feats that we can grab in various locations. And they are uh, of value. Don't kid yourself. But most of these um, tactics, I find, are for melee attackers. You know, ally spellcaster, back-to-back, uh, outflank, precise strike, all that stuff is really going to chime in when you're standing next to somebody. And you're not necessarily that guy. You're the bowman. You're the one standing in the back, peppering bad guys. Yes, you may have another bowman like Ekendayo standing right next to you with his actual composite longbow. That's fine, but it still doesn't seem to be something that I care too much to build around. Now, if I was playing in a modded version of this game, they have added more teamwork feats, and a couple of them are uh, ranged base, which I definitely approve of. That would be a different story, but that's for a modded build. We're not doing that today, 
uh, no one has asked for it anyway, and I'm not planning on building it if no one's going to ask for it. So I would probably shy away from fighters' tactics. But fighters' reflexes, that's a solid bonus. But again, we have a high dexterity anyway, so do we really need a better uh, reflex save? Hell yeah, you do. Why not? It's usually the thing that halves damage coming your way. Uh, and we can even get a ring, for example, that gives you evasion, which allows you to literally uh, roll that reflex save and take zero damage, which is freaking baller. So again, there's a lot of fun that can be had with this. If you don't grab that, though, trained initiative, again, is a solid choice. And again, it's the same general principle for every bonus that we get down here. So plus one, plus two, plus three, eventually plus four, we'll get that to our initiative. Again, that's not amazing, but it is a solid bonus to initiative, and I think you would appreciate this. But again, we're starting off with weapon training crossbows, running with it. So now already, I'll back off and just show you what we have here at level five. This would be about the time if you take the team, you're not doing anything other than sharing XP for every skill check for every people a person that's not on the team they're still getting the same amount of xp so you have all the xp share on is what i'm basically telling you you'll f fight the stag lord you will be level five which is what you're at right now notice how you have base attack bonus five you still only get two attacks and that's because of rapid shot the moment you become level six you're going to get a third attack it's going to be really really nice for you okay but you're still doing fine and again the haste spell on you and suddenly you got three attacks all at the full bad that you got right now you're doing decent damage uh, you have that point blank master going for you right now, so you don't have to worry about um, them getting all up and in your face. So you don't have to worry about that. You just pull it out and just start shooting the bastards right at point blank range. And because point blank range, for, remember this uh, 8 and 8 is not including point blank uh, shot. So you get a plus 1 to here. You also get a plus 1 to your damage with them within that 30 foot point blank range. So again, we can shoot farther than that, but if they're up and in it, we get more damage and more accuracy as a result. So again, you can see the appeal. So feel free to run up in their face if you feel like you can take that beating, you have good enough armor. And again, at this point, you can be wearing heavy armor if you so choose. Going fighter. Again, we're getting a bonus to our bravery again for our saves against fear effects, which you'll definitely appreciate. Uh, at this point, remember, many shots giving you a thumbs up, that's bullshit. We already have Point Blank Master keeps giving you the thumbs up like you want to grab it again. There's nothing for you to grab here. Unless you really wanted to go into a heavy crossbow uh, for the other. Uh, and it's saying that there's hand crossbows and heavy repeating and light repeating crossbows. I have yet to find these in this game. Uh, same with shurikens. Uh, I have never found them. Or slings for that matter. Sling staffs, throwing axes, those are applicable. Uh, short bows, obviously. Race spells, which you don't do. But long bows, uh, short bows. And again, those always include, by default, um, composite versions. Uh, javelins are in the game, heavy crossbows and light crossbows are in the game, uh, darts and bombs are in the game, but I've never seen some of those other things that they're talking about. And again, I know that I can gift them to myself using my mod, but if that's the only way I can get them, then I'm not going to pick those types of things. Clustered shots is a valid shot, uh, choice, but not really at this level. M many things aren't resistant yet, so I would say that you could probably push that back to at least level 10 or up. So on our list, what might you rather grab? Well, let's take a look at all the cool stuff that's available to us. Remember, blind fight's still here. Uh, maybe you want to grab that dodge now, get yourself some extra armor early. Improved initiative is always a valid option, so let's just mark that for the time being. Um, and there's not very much uh, waiting for you right now. I mean, you really have to wait. We show unavailable. Uh, you, you'll have to wait for things like Greater Weapon Focus, you need to be 8 for that. Greater Weapon Specialization, you need to be 12 for that. Uh, penetrating Strikes, you need to be 12 for that as well. So again, there's going to be a competition for what you're going to grab at that point. So again, there's a lot of things that are coming. We need to get enough fighter levels or bad levels to really qualify for the stuff that we really want. Hell, you can even grab Armor Focus right now. You're going to be wearing armor. You just need to know what kind you're going to be wearing because you're probably not going to waste three feet ticks to grab all three of these. You're going to pick one and run with it. Light armor is an obvious choice. You're going to have enough dexterity that you can really wear some good light armor and still have a solid armor class. But there's some really good medium and heavy armor. And again, I'll show you all three categories. It'll be up to you to make that decision. Again, passing on cluster shots for now. Blind fight is probably not important yet. Uh, and again, uh, only really for melee is it's extremely useful. It's only for at the end of the game where this immunity to gaze attacks is extremely valuable. Uh, but dodge... And never goes out of style. Improved initiative never goes out of style. Again, up to you, but I'd pick probably one of those. Going fighter, level 7. We're getting better armor training now. Uh, from here, 
anything else open up for us that might be of interest. Let's mark dodge for the time being. Hammer the gap. Again, extra damage. It's extra. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, notice that uh, Iron Will is something that I'll probably have grabbing. Uh, since I'm getting rid of many shots, this will probably be something that I would want to have. A bonus to your will saves. This is really your weak spot, and it really is. But again, right around the corner, we're about to get an upgrade that can actually turn the tides on that, so to speak. So we'll have a massive bonus eventually to our will saves. I still want it. It's still one of those things, though, that it's not as necessary. Toughness, on the other hand, especially if this is your main character, it is really, really nice to have a character that has just extra HP. And you just can't say enough good things about having more HP. So let's grab Toughness. Level 8 Fighter. Now everything's going into Dexterity. Like so. Uh, at this point, we've got that Greater Weapon Focus is just staring you down so it's improved Critical. Uh, that might be something that you want to have. A better crit range. I'll grab that before I grab the great weapon focus. Good news is, is with a fighter, every level you're getting a feat if you are a purist fighter. So you get one at one, one at two, one at three, one at four. It just continually gets better. Uh, let's do these first. Notice that we have weapon training crossbow. If you were to pick a different weapon choice, let's just do this here. Let's grab axes, let's just, just say. Um, I would actually have a choice here. So I can double up on axes or I can double up on crossbow. That's why I always pick crossbows first. But let's do the arm bravery. So again, our will saves are higher. I'd rather have that sooner than later. Uh, now, now that's these numbers here. That's going to your will saves. Now we actually have a plus one, plus two to our will saves across the board. Then it's plus three, four, and five to our will saves. And again, that's going to stack with the gear that we're going to get as well. So that's extremely nice. At this point, uh, again, no wrong answer, but blind fight's good. Great weapon focus is good. Clustered shots is getting to the point where it'd be probably pretty decent for you to have. Critical focus is pretty decent. And again, that's not a bad choice. That's a plus four to your chance to confirm a crit with your crossbow, so it does uh, more often than not crit. Again, on you. Dodge is still waiting for you down here. So again, there's a variety of choices. And again, no real wrong answer, but I know me. I'd rather be able to hit. So light crossbow, uh, greater weapon focus is kind of my go-to. Fighter, 10. Points there, there, and there. Uh, from here, like I said, at level 10, I probably would want to get clustered shots by that point. If you're not fighting dudes that have some damage reduction by now, something's probably happened, or you've made a mistake, or you just haven't been paying attention. Um, certainly you've found guys with damage reduction uh, early on. Uh, the mites, for example, that you fight with the kobolds, they have damage reduction. And even if you make friends with the mites, there's always those rogue might elements out there where the bastards will attack you. So the fact that they are going to be resistant to your arrows, or your bolts, excuse me, um, is kind of annoying. You still do plenty of damage, and deadly aim is just getting better, better, better. But, again, being able to just straight up ignore most of that until the very last shot, that's a really, really nice screw you to the bad guy. So cluster shots is definitely nice. Let's actually back out here just to show you what you'd be at level 10. Okay, So here's your guy again with nothing with a master work fight crossbow. you got three attacks, two really solid ones because thanks to rapid shot. And then a, a second attack, of course, because of your high bab. You're about to get at level 11 another attack, so you're about to get to four. But you're, doing, again, doing solid damage, 1d8 plus 10, and that's with a non-magic weapon. So give him a, a plus one crossbow by this time or find one that uh, that I'll give you that, of course, has like elemental damage with it. And suddenly you'll be whooping a serious amount of ass. Notice that our crit range is really high. Remember, all our crossbows are going to crit on a, a 19 and 20 normally, but thanks to improved critical, we're doubling that range. So again, you have a really good chance for you to land a crit. Uh, and again, critical focus will be something that we invest in in a moment. So again, doing really, really well. But again, notice our will saves. We would be really, really bad right now if it weren't for that arm bravery. See that? We'd actually be at a 3 here instead of a 6. So again, much appreciated. And again, the fact that we didn't invest in wisdom is another example of why... We're not the best fighter when it comes to will saves. Like that. Uh, and at this point... Sometimes they'll put stuff in the thumbs down category, so keep an eye for that shit. You'd be surprised how many times you'll be like, Where is it? Where is it? Oh, here it is, you bastard. Uh, but we grabbed our greater weapon focus. Clustered shot. Nothing here. Here, lightning reflexes, iron will, improve precise shot on the other hand. 
And that required us to have a bab of 11, so as soon as possible, we're getting you this bad boy. Your range attacks ignore anything but total concealment and cover. That's a really, really nice chance for you to re-roll uh, your attacks on um, range attacks, I believe. It might be that blind fighting marriages with that a little bit there. Uh, but we'll see. Nice bonus to dexterity, nice bonus to armor, nice bonus to reflexes, nice bonus to your attacks. Okay, good down there. Uh, time for greater weapon specialization for light crossbow? Sure, why not? It's a plus two. Well, here's why. Because you could actually remove the penetrating strike the DR5. Or lower anything that's above DR5 by five points. So if it's DR10, now it's DR5 for your uh, crossbow bolts. That's not bad. But again, a flat plus two to your damage across the board is also nice as well. And again, you have clustered shots already. So do you really need penetrating strikes? I mean, you could probably push it back a little bit. And again, get greater weapon specialization now. Get blind fight now. Get yourself dodge now. Again, hammer the gap. Another fine one where it's just steady damage. But those ones are kind of fluffy stuff. Uh, I, I would take things that I know are going to be valuable. Blind fight, again, is always going to be useful. First, let's go back here, get our crossbow train. Now we're at a plus three now to our attacks and plus three to our damage. Pretty nice. Uh, and then from here, uh, we've got the combat move defensive. Do we want to get the train initiative right now? It's a bonus to our initiate, uh, initiative. Nothing wrong with that. Um, I still maintain the combat maneuver defensive because if they come by, and especially if they try to trip your ass, that's a common attack. You really don't want to be tripped in this game. So this is a nice way to protect yourself from that. Uh, from here, uh, let's grab... Greater, greater Weapon Specialization, sure. Fighter. Do, 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 do. I'm going to grab... Critical Focus. Fighter. And I'm going to grab myself Blinding Critical. This is the soonest that you can grab Blinding Critical. It's 15, and you need the Critical Focus before that. See how we plan that? Perfect synergy here. 14, you pick that one up, and then at 15, you get one of the best critical effects that you can have, in my opinion. Now, let's back off here and show you what happens when you're at level 15 for your character. Again, your solid four attacks now. And again, this is without a speed weapon or haste on your character. You can get either of those things, and now we're up to five attacks around instead of four. We're doing really good. Have a nice attack. Notice that our deadly aim is at a minus four, but we're at a solid plus eight damage now with that little bastard. We're actually doing with it nothing but a masterwork crossbow right now. An extra 15 damage. That's pretty nice, I'd say. Fighter. Uh, dexterity. Getting more dexterity is always appreciated. Uh, from this point, um, you can double down and start grabbing other criticals. Uh, I still maintain that things like dodge would still be of value to you. Uh, and again, crossbow training. Now for here, uh, train initiative. And for our feet pick, I'm going to go with... So there's tiring critical, staggering critical, sickening critical. Again, those are all options. So you can only have one on at a time, but there's a feat that unlocks that allows you to have two on at a time. I still maintain, though, that I'd like to have penetrating strikes. That one's extremely valuable for me. Now, again, improved blind fight does have its uses. Again, you're not meleeing, but keep reading. Um, if you successfully pinpoint an invisible or hidden attack within 30 feet, that attacker gets no advantages related to hitting you with ranged attacks. So there's still value to have improved blind fight, even though you're not a meleeer. Just be real clear on this. But I don't think that's something that you care about. Again, Hammer the Gap is still here. But I do like that penetrating strikes. Because really, just ignoring 5 DR goes super, super handy. Fighter. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Almost done. Uh, at this point, I'm going to grab... Greater penetrating strikes? Sure, why not? Nineteen. Do, 
is wrong with not that it matters really uh, I'm gonna grab for my very last feet oh, two feet sorry um, let's grab Darius could be fun no we said we wanted iron will didn't we yeah bonus there will says got that armor mastery now last point dexterity get more reflexes yes please better attack bonus sure really good oh, well not skills because we actually didn't invest in anything that's deck space which is kind of weird that's what it is weapon mastery make sure to pick that light crossbow and then for our last feat here what is of value Yeah, we can get a different type of critical. Uh, improved blind fight, like I said, it has its uses. Endurance is the one that I was looking at a moment ago. Combat reflexes is kind of okay. Um, now, nah. back to back combat expertise is something you could have done. But I do like the idea of endurance. Uh, and uh, two reasons. One, because our bonus to athletics checks uh, and the fact that we can wear light or medium armor and still have it on while we're taking a nap. That doesn't mean you have to wear light or medium armor. Again, that's on you, but I do like that as an option. And there, there's more to it than just that. It also gives you like a bonus to your check against fatigue and exhaustion effects. But it's really about wearing the armor. So now that's our guy. Let's just look at our skills here real quick. So when we finished, we have a nice solid 16 to athletics. And remember, we haven't buffed up with gear yet. We have a nice 23 persuasion, and remember, for someone that has a charisma of 10, that's pretty goddamn solid, I'd say. Uh, 15 on Knowledge World, that's not amazing, and again, if you don't want that, don't invest in it, dump all points in Athletics, you could have had a nice solid 26 to Athletics, that's on you. Uh, or maybe you wanted Trickery or Stealth, again, on you for what you wanted to spend those on. But I'd keep it to the ones that had the green check mark, quite frankly. Uh, Lord Nature, on the other hand, is rocking a solid 23, and with no Wisdom, that's a, still a solid Lord Nature, in my opinion. So skinning animals and getting that, that free stuff that you can sell back to bases is decent, as well as you know telling what animals' uh, weaknesses and abilities are. And of course, your highest perception I can give you is 20. Again, with no wisdom, it's kind of lackluster, I'll grant you, but there's no green check mark next to perception. So that's kind of a bummer. Kind of weird, I must say, too, for a fighter not to have perception as something that they actually are quote-unquote trained in. I mean, that'd be something you would think that they would definitely have, that and mobility, no less. But apparently I'd be mistaken. They would know about the world and nature because I'm a fighter. Of course I know about trees and hugging shit. I don't know. It just seems weird to me. But it's what it is. Um, for the character himself, now let's actually kit, kit him out with some gear. Uh, so we'll do bag of tricks. I want to do uh, items and equipment. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to go uh, one at a time. So let's actually first talk about armor. Uh, there are choices that I like, uh, but everybody's different. Uh, my favorite that's going to be expensive and hard to find, Royal Guardian. Uh, that's a biggie. Uh, don't like that one. Then I also like Mail. Uh, sorry, Mail of Clear Skies. That's a good one. Uh, I do like the Heavenly Vest. Uh, I like ghost leather. And again, uh, the problem with so many choices here is the fact that you literally uh, could be giving these to another teammate. Ghost leather, for example, is a fine one to give to Knock Knock because he loves his sneak attack. Anytime he gets hit, you get turned into an invisible bastard for two rounds. Greater than this, no less. So that gives him a lot of protection and it gives him the ability to respond back with some sneak attacks. So might not be the best character choice for this character, or armor choice for this character, but I still maintain that it's a solid thing that you should consider. Uh, Tal wins armor. Uh, so, uh, the one that most people would probably want is Imperial Jaeger. And, or Jaeger, excuse me. Uh, and, I don't know German. And, actually, I know my drinks. <laughs> Jaegermeister! Uh, uh, Celestial armor is another good choice. Now, the reason Imperial Jaeger is so good is, um, it gives you a bonus with crossbows, and I'll show you that here in a moment. 
Uh, bone mail, and we're getting into some of the more complicated armor. Bone mail's not bad. Uh, I do like uh, Heart of Valor. So I just type in Val Valor. There we are. Uh, and then we're getting into like some, some badass shit. So we have like Battle Master Plate. And then of course the ever popular Gift Armor Onslaught. And again, that's my armor choice. So let's actually break that down first before we go into other things. So here's our armor. Let's take this piece of shit off. Uh, so we have, I don't want to do by price. I want to do by uh, newest to oldest. Okay, so here's our, oh, I got to Talk to the dragon. Hey, show me what this stuff is. Thank you, dragon. All right, here's our onslaught armor. This is the one that I recommend if you want to uh, have strength here and not have it in your belt. The reason I say that, or, or your hands for that matter, um, is there's some decent belts that you can have here that are dex and con base. For example, there's one that uh, gives you dex 8, con 8, and poison immunity. So again, if you have strength here, and again, strength isn't necessary for this character. So you'd be like, who gives a shit? Why are you giving him strength? Well, he's going to carry stuff with the team. As you can see, he's already overburdened right now with all the crap that we're carrying. So again, he's going to be carrying stuff. So strength is important. You don't want to have a strength of 8 just because you're wielding a crossbow. So again... It is valid to have a higher strength stat. The real reason I like this is because of the armor that you're going to get from this. This is an amazing armor. Uh, 14 armor right now. Notice that max dexterity of 3. If you go to your touch armor, you're seeing your dexterity bonus is actually plus 6. Why? Well, one, it's capped out at 6 right now. But the other is um, you have armor training, remember? We can get that up to 4 points higher. So where it says max dexterity 3, technically that should be 7. Okay, so that means if I had even another point in dexterity up here, then I'd actually have a touch armor class of 18. That's not bad. Now, of course, we're going to exceed that by leaps and bounds once I get that belt. Matter of fact, let's just gift us that belt right goddamn now, because um, we definitely wanted it. I want to say it's Devil Sash, 8 dex con, and immunity. That's our guy. Okay, that doesn't mean this is the only belt you could have had. Okay, we got to talk to the dragon so we can see it. See my belt? Yeah, it's Devil's Ash. Good job. Okay. Now, again, this would be the 8-8-8 the eight, eight, eight that you typically want. Again, there is a belt out there that's an 8-8-8 eight, eight, eight for strength. So if you don't like the Onslaught armor, feel free to ditch it for any of these other choices. I like it for not just the strength being freed up and the fact that now I can have this belt that gives me immunity to poison. There's a variety of ways to be immune to poison other ways, so don't feel bad. And you have a pretty goddamn good fortitude save right now anyway. So you're probably pretty fucking resistant to poison, no less. But immunities are power, as we all know. And, again, I like the fact that this is something that you can pretty much plan to get in the game. You just keep kissing this dude's ass, do all his quests, and eventually that motherfucker will give you this armor. The other reason I like this is not just because it's a badass armor as far as the, the 14. It's also one that increases your speed by 20. And you're like, why would you care? You are a bowman. You're shooting at distance. Yes, but routinely, and if you've ever played with Ekendayo, you realize because he's at range and the other teammates are at uh, melee, that he literally is always outside of the range of targets because he kills so well. He's shooting, he's shooting, he's shooting. That guy's dead, he keeps shooting, shooting. That guy's dead. Now he can't shoot at anyone else because he's out of range. So what happens? In the next round, you can either stutter step five goddamn feet or just haul your ass up to a decent spot on that map where you get a lot more guys in combat and shoot once. And that sucks, but moving 30 is helpful. Moving 50 and shooting is way better. And that's why I appreciate the extra speed. Now, you may say, well, I would rather give this to my main front tech bastard, Harem, or, you know, whoever. That's, you know, Jathel, who literally is a strength-based character who's going to wield a scythe and crush some ass and be wearing full plate while she does it. Again, hey, fine. That's why we have so many choices here. This is just kind of one of my go-tos. And the fact that you're a fighter means that you're allowed to wear it. Doesn't mean you have to. Here's your battle master. I'll look at this bad boy. And again, knows that your strength goes down. Um, you have... A 13 instead of 14, so it's not as good as far as armor is concerned, but it is mithril, so it is light, uh, and of course that means it has a better max dexterity. So notice our touch armor is 18 here. What's it when onslaught's on? Same thing. So nothing's really changing as far as that's concerned. But look at the 32 to 24, 31 to 23, so it goes down one. And again, it's because this is a 13, that's a 14. But this does more than just that. It's got the ability to cast greater heroism once a day, as if you were 11th level wizard so what's greater heroism that's a plus 40 your fucking swing that's what that is it's like temp hp a plus 40 your skills I mean, it's a, a very nice buff 
And again, you can see the appeal here. If you want to have that spell on tap, it's only once a day. But hey, man, when you're in a really pinch for a fight, having that 29 jump up to a 33 looks pretty fucking sexy to me. And again, everybody's different on this sort of thing. Don't like that one. Here is our Heart of Valor. Uh, again, just for reference sake, 32, 24, 18. Let's jump that now to a 28, 18, 20. So touch is better. These two are worse. Well, why is touch better? Because we're actually getting all nine of 10 of that dexterity. We're not even getting all of it, but we're getting pretty goddamn close now. And again, it's because it already had a max dexterity of five. Add four to that, that's nine. We have a 10, so again, we're kind of getting screwed here. And we're not done, by the way, getting dex. We've yet to drink the potion that gives us a plus two to all your stats if this is your main character, so this could be an 11. I could get you that ring that gets you another plus two to dexterity, which means another point here. So we could be a plus 12 here pretty easily by the end of the game. Just saying, if you see that you're getting capped out like this one is, there's still room for improvement. That's why the, all the other armors are on this list. But this one's decent for a couple of reasons. One, I'll get a bonus to fear effect saves. And that's a morale bonus. That's appreciated. And again, you may say, well, we have a massive will save right now thanks to that kick-ass ability. Yes, but notice that it's not a morale bonus. So armed bravery, that plus five is pretty. Add four more to that um, 13 that you're seeing down here. And you could be a 17 against fear effects. That's not bad. And again, you are wearing mithril armor, so it's less of a problem. Hence the reason for the max dexterity bonus and blah, blah, blah. But it's still not the best. It's easy to get it, though. One of the reasons it's on the list. Not a fan of that one. Let's get to bone mail. This one's interesting because it gives you some resistant or damage reduction, excuse me, against physical attacks except for bludgeoning. So piercing and slashing. So again, when people try to shoot you with arrows themselves, you have some decent DR, even if it's only five. The immunity to cold can't be discounted. That's an amazing upgrade for you. And again, it's solid armor. It's only got a max dex area three, but again, with your training, that's actually four higher. So again, seven. Hence the reason your touch armor kind of sucks, but it's reasonably easy to get this one. And it does look pretty fucking tits, I must say. Oh, yeah, shit, you got bones hanging off you. Uh, don't like that one. Celestial armor is another really good one. This is the one that, again, most people would rather give to someone else because this is the one that I believe is considered light armor. Even though it says medium. Oh, I could be mistaken. I could be thinking of something else. But one of these armors that we're going to show you here is considered actual light armor. Even though it says medium it is actually, if you can only wear light armor and not medium, it will let you equip it. Uh, this one's decent. Uh, and again, okay armor class, max dexterity of 8. We're actually getting a problem here. Why would I get a problem here? What's going on? Why is that only giving me a dex bonus of three? That's a glitch. I'm not getting my armor training now. Huh. Wonder why that is. Well, we'll find out. Anyway, Celestial Armor. Uh, Imperial Jaeger. This is the one, like I said, that most people would swear by. It's decent armor. It's not amazing. 28, 18, and 20 right now. That's not bad. Uh, and again, we are getting out of that touch, a 9 for dexterity, out of the 10. So we're already at cap, so we're not going to be able to get more than what we already have here, even if we push that dexterity higher, higher, higher. But um, this is nice because this one gives us a plus 2 to our attacks with uh, crossbows specifically. It says it down there, and it does say crossbows, attacks and damage. So a plus 2 for all those attacks and a plus 2 to our damage. And again, a lot of people would swear by that. And again... It's listed under being banded mail for some silly ass reason, but it's clearly light armor, studded leather. Okay, so this is a, a decent armor for you, especially if you want to you know, capitalize on your ability to hit and dish out a little more damage. Not a fan of that one. Here's Talon's armor. And again, here's another problem. Why are we glitching out on this damn... Oh, I bet it's the... Okay, it's probably the heavy. That's what it is. Let's do this right. Uh, I'm going to give you the belt of uh, perfection plus eight. Just because we are flip flopping. There we go. So let's go back to this one here again. So here's our onslaught 32, 24, 18. Battle Master 31, 23, 18. Heart of Valor 28, 18, 20. Bone Mills 27, 19, 18. Doing okay. Celestial Armor, this is where it freaked out on us. There it is. Okay, now 30, 19, 21. That's better. 
And again, it was because we were overweight. I wasn't seeing the encumbrance issue. When you're encumbered, you only get so much uh, of your dexterity modifier. You get really, really screwed. This is why, again, you want strength on a character. Uh, but, assuming you do, this is a solid armor class for your character. A 30, a 19, and a 21 is nothing to sneeze at. That's actually pretty goddamn high. Uh, now, it's not comparable to, say, this guy here. A 32, 24, 18. But the 18 is not as good as the 21. So, again, which would you rather have? Worse armor in this category, but better touch armor class? Or better armor in these categories, and your touch armor class be a little bit lower? And that is stuff that I can't decide for you. So, again, that's our... Celestial armor. Here is our Jaeger at 28, 18, 20. And again, our bonus to our attacks and a bonus to our damage. Here is our Talwin's armor. 27, 20, 17. Not the best. And you may say, why even bother with this piece of shit? Well, it's because of what it gives you. This is the one that a 50% chance to negate a sneak attack or critical hit. It means damage is still coming through, but it's not a crit or a sneak attack anymore. 50% of the time. And that's not bad. That's a, that's a really nice life-saving type of armor right there. Just saying. Uh, don't like that, though. Then we have our Ghost Leather, 26, 15, 21. And again, notice something on this one. The max dexterity is 6 plus 4, 10. We're getting all 10. Dexterity bonus plus 10. Uh, and again, we can get that 2 higher. So this is still not ideal. We'd rather be able to get 2 higher to get that up to a solid 23, but so far, no joy. But this is still pretty good, good goddamn armor. This is the one that, again, I told you that if you get hit, you get greater invis on you for 2 rounds. So you can kind of capitalize on it. It gives you extra armor. 50% chance that they straight up just miss you if they can't see you because you're invisible. You can do sneak attack, but we don't do that sort of thing. This is why this is the one you usually give to knock knock. But again, this is solid, solid armor for what it really does. Don't like that one. Here is our heavenly vest. And again, 10 is our max right now, but is it the max? 6 and 4 is 10, so it's really at cap right now. So again, we're not getting any better than this. 30, 19, 21. This is still decent armor. Uh, and again, mithril armor, which is why the, the max dexterity is so goddamn high. Uh, but the other reason for Heavenly Vest that I like is this little catch right here. Immunity to energy drain. If you've ever been sat with like an innervation spell or an energy drain spell that like lowers your levels by like a decent amount, that shit straight up sucks, and that's what energy drain is. So this is a nice immunity to it. And it, let's face it, it's totally Lord of the Rings fucking feel to it. And again, this mithril shirt that, that the one doofus was wearing. Totally feels like it, right? And again, solid, solid choice. And again, it's still a solid, decent armor thanks to your uh, high uh, dexterity modifier that you're still being uh, applied. Uh, Mail of the Clear Skies, on the other hand, is penalized in that it's a max dexterity of plus 9, not plus 10. So again, 5 and 4 is uh, 9. That's why it's a little bit lower. So it's not great, but 31, 21, and 10 is still a solid choice. Um, this is the one that I was telling you about, that it is considered light armor. So again, if you wanted training in light armor, for whatever reason, which I did not pick, this is considered light armor, even though it says medium armor at the top, it says light armor at the bottom, and it really is. So you can trust that. I don't know why the tooltip still says medium, though, probably because it's categorized by the chain mail. But this is, again, decent armor. This really, really is. Uh, and then um, Royal Guardian, like I said, this is my favorite. It's not the best armor. 29, 18, and 21. But look at this. Max dexterity of 15, plus four more thanks to your training knot that you needed. You could get up to a 19 bonus over here if you could get that high. You could totally rock that shit. We can't get that high. The best I'm going to get you is like 12, uh, so two more. Uh, but again, you will have that up to a 23. This will be 18 still. This will be a 31. So it'll be 31, 18, 23 by the end of the build. Just saying, that's pretty fucking sweet. And this is the one that gives you an extra 20 HP. So you see that our health went up. Uh, 324. So again, this is is my favorite. Doesn't mean you have to take that one. And again, if you go through the list, again, the, the, the caveat is always the same. Look for max dexterity. You want something that's a max dexterity of like 7 because, or, or sorry, 8. Because if we can get a max dexterity of 8 uh, on the tooltips, uh, then 4 more than, above that would be 12. And that's the, the cap for us right now is 12. So nothing falls in that category. We'll get some stuff that's close. Oh, here's one. Celestial armor. That one would work. And again, this could get to be 23. This could be 32. This stays 19. And that's not bad. It just, we don't get the extra 20 HP. So again, potato, patata. Uh, this one's slightly better armor. Uh, this one's slightly better in that I get 20 extra HP. So on you. Do you want the Celestial Armor or do you want the Royal Guardian? Or again, if you really want it, you go for that fucking Jagger, man. That Jagger is not bad. It's not super awesome. I mean, you get capped very quickly. 
so it's not getting any better than this, but it's a solid, solid upgrade for your character, and that solid, solid bonus to your swing and the bonus to your damage, which I think you would appreciate. So let's just keep that for the time being. Um, because of this, if we're not using that onslaught armor, then I, I almost recommend that you have to use the belt of uh, physical perfection 8, 8, and 8. Just to re all that stuff so I don't have the unidentified. I hate when it says unidentified. So this is the one that I would recommend for you if you're not wearing the onslaught armor. Uh, and that's fine. Now, go back to our list. Uh, from here, we've talked about armors, we've talked about belts, uh, footwear, it's always the same for me. I mean, you have a variety of choices, so you'll pick and choose as you need, but the one that you almost always get is the Manticore skin boots. Uh, and that's just because they're freaking amazing. It's a plus 4 to your armor, and as well as a plus 10 to your speed. Uh, and again, I, I like being zippy. And, that, and yes, that does stack with the Onslaught armor, so if you wanted to have a, a movement of 60 instead of 30, Onslaught armor and those goddamn boots. That's an amazing upgrade for your character. Uh, from there, uh, for gloves, and again, this is a, a, a dilemma one. There's good choices in here. The one that I recommend for you is the Gloves of Precise Shot. It's these guys right here. Plus five to attack rolls made with ranged weapons. So the, again, this does not count for ray spells, not that you cast those, but I'm just saying, if you thought that this would be a plus five to your ray caster build, no, it does not. The one you want for that one is called Deadly Death from Afar. That's these guys here. Plus four bonus to ranged attacks, all ranged attacks, okay? So that's why that one's different than this guy here. This one is for anyone that's wielding a weapon that's a ranged weapon, and you are. So this is awesome. You definitely want those. There's other things in here. You can get the ones that give you armor. get the ones that give you, like, the ray spells, the star soldiers gauntlets. That's a strength bonus one. So, again, if you wanted to go back to having the, the dex and con belt that makes you immune to poison, you could equip these and get your strength back up to plus eight and get that kick-ass laser beam. Because why the fuck not? Because maybe you want to be able to go pew, pew, pew and hit something with some fire damage every now and again. That's 12d6 of fucking damage. 4d6, 4d6, and 4d6, you get all three attacks. And you do that every combat round if you so choose. I'd rather shoot with my bow, but everybody's different. And again, I'm not going to steer you away from really good gear. Um, let's look at the dragon real quick. Hey, buddy, look at my stuff. No, you can't have it. Go away. Okay, so let's put on set glows. Now watch your 31 over here. 36, looking pretty sweet, right? We're not done yet. Oh, how about we talk about necklace? Necks uh, are different in that um, there's a variety of good stuff in here. Uh, normally, if I say you don't have those boots, the Amulet of Natural Armor plus 5 is a, go, a good go-to. Uh, but the one that I almost always uh, land on is uh, Gyrona's Amulet. That's not to say it's the only choice in here. There's a lot of good stuff in here. But Gyrona's Amulet is the one that um, it gives you like a plus 5 to your armor. That's this guy here. Uh, across the board, here, here, and here. Ready? Bam. And you're at, sitting in a solid touch armor class now. And this is the one that, uh, when your fight starts, poof, mirror image is cast on your character. So again, extra protection for your character that's very squishy. I think you would appreciate that. Uh, from there, uh, let's go back to headwear. Uh, and for headwear, uh, there's some really good choices. Uh, point you at a few of them. So we have something called Sharp Eye. Uh, I want Marksman's Helmet. Or Marksman's Headset, excuse me. Uh, and Helmet of Guiding Lights. And Faultless Protector. Oh, I probably passed it already. Oh, faultless protection, excuse me. Okay, those are the four that I would recommend. Now, again, let's look at the dragon. Hey, buddy. See my stuff? Cool. Good talking to you. All right, so here's your helmets. Okay, so now why these ones in reverse order? So here's uh, faultless protection. Uh, not counting the look, and again, I can't tell you if you want to just go by theme, so the look is kind of weird, but notice this one. Immune to critical hits. <laughs> yes. Plus four bonus to attack rolls made to confirm critical hits. Now, until you're level 20... Remember, you still have to confirm critical hits. Why not have it be plus four higher? Well, you may say, well, I already got a plus four thanks to my critical focus. Yeah, as far as I know, this shit stacks. So you can be at a plus eight to your chance to confirm critical hits with your crossbow. Why wouldn't you want that? And immune to critical hits against you? 
Hell yes, this is solid. You got good armor. The only thing that's probably getting through is going to be sneak attacks and critical hits, something that could roll a nat 20 that penetrates this high-ass armor that you have. So it doesn't mean they'll crit you, because remember, there's always that chance that they could roll the second time when they try to confirm the hit, and they don't confirm it. So it's just regular damage. But so what? Wouldn't you rather just guaranteed be regular damage? That's why you use a helmet like this. Don't like that? Okay. Here is... Helmet of Guiding Light. You may say, this one seems kind of weird. A bonus to their perception, uh, lore nature, two things that you care about, but keep reading. You can cast True Strike, a spell you can't cast because you're just a fighter, but you can cast that three times a day as a swift action. Remember what that one does. The True Strike is a plus 20 to your swing for that uh, first attack off. So if you really are not hitting a target, like you, for whatever reason, that bastard is just too fucking hard to hit, and you just need to do some fucking damage, True Strike... Boom. And True Strike does just more than that. Not only give you a plus 20 to your swing, I want to say it ignores like everything but total concealment. So if they have like Blur on, poof, not a problem. Again, three times a day. And it's a swift action, which means I can activate it and still fire my crossbow. That's not bad. That is not bad at all. And I think you would appreciate having something like that. Don't like that one? Fine. Go for the Marksman's headset. Again, it says it in the name, plus you like, look like you're on the Bobby. That's my terrible... Uh, uh, Australian accent. Anyway, uh, Markman headset. Bonus of perception, again, yay. Deadly aim feat, if it's on, you get a plus two to your attack rolls. And we do have deadly aim on all the item time. So that minus six is now technically speaking a minus four. So again, you'll appreciate this. It, it kind of counters the penalty. And while that sounds good, and it is good, notice this next one. Sharp eye. Doesn't look like much, but it's a plus six, not plus five to perception. And instead of just being a, a, a plus two but only when Deadly Aim is on, it's a plus two, period, for your ranged attacks. So again, you're getting it all the time. I could even shut Deadly Aim off, because again, maybe I'm just missing. And a minus six, that's still a big penalty. Shut that shit off. Yes, I'll lose out on a shit ton of damage, but you know what? Zero damage, because you're missing, 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 is not preferred compared to shutting off that minus six penalty and hitting them with a lower hit. Right? So again... This one would benefit you all the time, even when you shut that Deadly Aim off. And again, it is a better bonus to Perception than this hat was. Yeah, you don't get a cool hat, but so what? Again, Sharp Eye would be the one that i go with. Again, on you to make a decision on those four. Those are the four that stick out to me as being awesome. Now that we've talked about those, so we've come over that, 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 that. Not miscellaneous items yet, we'll come that in a minute. We've done neck items, rings. You know my love for a ring of um, circumstances. Create a ring of ultimate protection. If we made a lawful good character, ring of law, any character, evasion, ring of chaos, if you're a chaotic type character, ring of blur, create a ring of balance, if you're a true neutral character, great dreamer smile is decent. And there's, like I said, there's a laundry list of good stuff in here. I can't tell you what to grab. Hell, even dragonfly ring, if you didn't get dexterity some other way, like your belt, you can totally get the dragonfly ring, and that's a, a plus eight to dexterity, and it gives you the ability to cast cleanse. But this is the ring you want, the the ring of circumstances. I'm gonna talk to the dragon. Hey, look at my shit. Yeah, it's my shit. You can't have my shit. Fuck off, dragon. Uh, we want to do a rest real quick because we need to recharge the ring. This is the only thing about this ring that's really kind of weird. You have to rest, then you get all the togs. See this stuff here. Now you get four things that you can activate. And I can't tell you what to activate. I can tell you what I would activate. I'm going to get armor. I'll happily take dexterity. And I'll happily take, as weird as it sounds, a plus one to damage. It's only plus one to damage, but you know what? Fuck you. I want it. Now you could get more intelligence. You get more con, the extra HP, uh, more fortitude saves. Uh, but there's a bonus in here for just straight up saving throws. And I'd rather have that. I could have gone skills. I could have gone uh, speed and make myself move just a tiniest bit faster. Again, on you for what you turn on for that fourth one. But again, I have damage, I have armor, I have dexterity, and I have saving throw bonuses. And all those are bountiful right now. And again, that's where we get to our plus 11 here. Very, very happy with that. Again, we're doing pretty good. And our damage is looking a little bit better too. So we'll definitely appreciate all that. Uh, now, uh, for the other ring, and again, this is again on you. Just to walk you through this. Ring of Law, nice deflection bonus, immune to confusion and fear. Okay. You have to be lawful. We are lawful. Good. Uh, evasion. This one's a nice one because, again, uh, we don't normally have access to this with that high reflex save that we have. And it's going to get higher once we put on, like, a cloak of resistance plus six or something similar. Um, 
when we make that reflex save, remember, you would take no damage. Uh, whenever she makes a reflex save, throw to determine whether she takes half damage, a successful save results in no damage. The very last sentence there. That's what this brings gives you. And you may say, well, that's not that big a deal, and you're not likely to be hit because you're in the far, far back. What's the chances the bad guys are going to target you with an AoE spell? Since you're only one person, they'll hit rather the cluster of team that's up front where they can hit more guys. Sure, the game might do that, but again, that's an option. Uh, a Ring of Chaos, if you're chaotic, again, plus four deflection bonus, that's nice. And my personal uh, favorite reason for this one, the continuous freedom of movement. So again, no paralysis anymore, motherfuckers. That's not bad. Don't want that. Ring of Blur, just a constant 20% chance to straight up miss my character. Fuck you, game. I have Blur all the time, and I'm just a fighter. Pretty cool. Don't like that. Greater Ring of Ultimate Protection is the go-to one, because it gives you so many things. Plus five deflection. That's here. That's here. And that's here. As you can see, we have five to each of these categories added. So that's a really nice touch armor right now. And it goes even further. Plus five to all your saving throws. So now I don't need a Cloak of Resistance bloody block because I got five, five, and five here now. That's pretty fucking sweet. Keep going. I got Spell Resistance 24. That's not amazing, but it will help. And a DR2 slash Dash, which again isn't amazing, but it will limit damage coming my way. Until, of course, I get to level 20 where I get a better upgrade than that. That's my go-to ring. Uh, there's other choices. A greater ring of balance, just to show these to you. If you're true neutral, plus five deflection. So that's just as good as this one as far as deflection is concerned. Uh, you get immunity to emotion effects, fear, confusion, and continuous freedom of movement, which means you cannot be paralyzed. So a true neutral light crossbowman could have some serious fun with the greater ring of balance. Don't like that one? Then, of course, here's the Great Dreamer Smile. This is another go-to one. Plus two to our swing, plus two to our damage, and they're all luck bonuses, stuff that we didn't normally have, so that's awesome. We get a bonus to our saving throws, two, two, and two. Now, of course, you see it went down because we're not using the kick-ass ring, so that's why I go back to your Cloak of Resistance plus five or six, making these go up five or six higher. That's still pretty fucking solid. And bonus to our skills and spell pen, not that we care, but also we're immune to curses now. Again, this is a really good ring, especially if you want to hit and do some extra damage. Again, maybe that's not your cup of tea. Um, the last one here is the Dragonfly Ring. This is the one that's just a plus 8 to Dexterity, and yes, I know we have that here right now, but maybe you didn't have that one. Maybe you picked a different belt. Uh, maybe you had the Onslaught Armor for plus 8 to Strength. This is plus 8 to Dex. Maybe you had something else down here that gave you a plus 4, plus 6, or plus 8 to Con because it allows you to turn into a dragon or whatever. And hey, man, do that thing. Know that there's ways to get dexterity other ways. That's my point to you. And there's even necklaces that do that shit, too, where it's like a plus four or plus six to your dexterity modifier. I like the fact that it allows us to cast cleanse on ourselves three times a fucking day. That's a nice heal and our ability to remove uh, like a ability drain and, and penalty st uh, stats and all kinds of other cool shit. So again, this is a decent ring. But again, my go-to is still probably the greater ring of ultimate protection. But again, on you to make that decision. I'm not done yet. Uh, where's my... Uh, after rings, we're not using shields. We could, but we're not. You can't use shields with a crossbow. Uh, shoulder items. There's a laundry list in here, but the one that I settled on was uh, Cloak of the Chosen. Where are you at, little bastard? Noxious Veil's honorable mention, so I'm going to grab it. Cloak of the Chosen right there. There's other ones. This is not by any stretch of the imagination the best. Uh, just what I settled on and I thought was a decent choice. Again, I'm just looking at it just so the dragon can identify it. Now, Cloak of the Chosen. Immunity to Blindness and Dazzle. That's a biggie. Plus three resistance on will saves. That doesn't matter because our ring is already giving us plus five resistance. They won't stack. So we're not getting that. But notice this last part. The ability to cast Prayer... As a level 9 cleric, so 9 rounds does it last for, at will. Which means it never wears off. Every round, if I so choose, I can do prayer. And remember what prayer does. Prayer is um, an okay buff to your attack, your damage, and I think even your saves or your skills. One of those two. Uh, so it's a decent spell. But it's all, and also AoE, so it buffs you and your team and your pets, presumably. And it's also a debuff for the exact same things for the bad guy, and there is no save for it. That doesn't mean there's not spell resistance or spell immunity to it, but it does mean that you have a pretty good chance of setting those guys up to make it harder for them to hit you, and even when they do, they do less damage. So you would appreciate this, I thought. And again, the immunity, that's the real biggie here, the blindness, the dazzle. That's really, really nice. 
because it prevents a lot of problems for your character. Remember, if you're blind, you're having real problems shooting with that goddamn crossbow. So again, a decent upgrade. Don't like that one. Again, uh, Noxious Veil vale is a honorable mention. Acid Resistance 30, again, while it's not an immunity, that's some nice protection. And there's other cloaks that protect you from fire and cold and electric too. But this one's nice in that not only does it give you that high Acid Resistance 30, it allows you to cast Acid Fog twice a day. And that's damage that's like 2d6, I want to say, a damage per round. So that's maximum 12 points of damage on a spike. With this cloak on, you're immune to it. So you could cast that at your goddamn feet and shoot bad guys while you're in the cloud. Doesn't it penalize your swing or anything like that. Um, but you will not take damage from it because of the cloak. And they will take damage if they try to bum rush your ass and stand toe to toe with you. Remember, you have point blank master. So you can shoot them in the fucking face. And it is not a problem. You will not provoke a tactical opportunity and their flesh will just melt off thanks to your acid fog you just cast at your feet. So again, you could see the appeal for some of these things. Again, just different tactics. Everyone's going to play it slightly different. The last things to talk about besides our weapons is going to be this and, of course, what we're going to put in our belt slots here. That's going to be more important than you think. But let's go look at those bracers first. So those fall under wrist items. Uh, now you may think, oh, bracers of archery. Remember, it is literally for bow, not crossbow. Bow doesn't work for a crossbow. Same with lesser braces of archery. Braces of armor class plus eight. Honestly, I'm going to grab it just because uh, and... Uh, Bracer Deflection, Charms, Touch, Force, Knights, Bracers. I'm going to grab all of those, show you the one that I want. Um, there's actually two on this list that I actually think are worth a damn for you, uh, but uh, I could see a case for some of these others. So let's talk about weird case scenario. That Brace of Armor Class plus eight. You may say, well, that's stupid. You already have armor. Sure, I have an eight armor right there. So having that on doesn't do me any bit of good, right? So you see my 43 over here. Put this on. Still at 43. But there were other armor choices, if you'll recall, and not all of them had an armor class of 8 or better. These ones all did. Ghost Leather did not. So if you wanted Ghost Leather and you're like, yeah, but my armor sucks, see that plus 8? That's what it would be without it. And you'd be like, well, I don't want to be at 41, but that's why you can say, well, then put these bracers back on and put yourself at a 44 and your flat foot it comes up too. And you still get the benefit of when you do get hit, you go greater in vis for two goddamn rounds. Again, ways around the problem is what I'm trying to show you here, okay? But maybe that's still not your thing. Maybe you still really want to be back in that um, Royal Guardian awesome armor or whatever. And again, solid choice up to you. Uh, Heavenly Ghost Leather, yeah. So I mean, really, between this or, where did you go? The Celestial, Celestial is probably the best on that list, not counting, of course, my favorite, the Onslaught Armor. Um, up to you to make those decisions. But for other uses of your Bracer, we have Chiron's Touch, spells that you didn't have access to. You can cast Harm once a day. That's uh, up to, uh, I think, 110, So I don't think it's full damage. 150 would be full. But I think it's like 110 damage to the bastard that you touch on the fucking shoulder. And again, you don't have Weapon Finesse. That sucks. So you're going to be swinging with this plus 5 instead of this plus 11. But eh, whatever. Still a solid way for you to walk over and go, boop, fuck you, take damage. Or you could use this to heal Jaythel. Remember, she's undead. A harm spell cast on her heals her. So that's a 110, or, or if it is maximum, 150 points of health that you can just heal her at a touch once a day. That's not bad. Notice the other two uh, uses a day, though. Greater false life, something you couldn't do, and that's temp HP twice a day that you can cast on yourself just free uh, willy-nilly. That's not bad. Don't like that one? I have this one as honorable mention. This is Bracers of Deflection. Notice it's plus two deflection armor, which we're getting from our ring, plus five, so they don't stack. Keep reading. Um, the ability to cast a shield spell twice a day as a fifth level wizard. That's power. Again, that's five minutes and five minutes again. So that's ten minutes of buff or two separate fights and then some. And that's a plus four to your armor here and here, but not here. Remember, that's a shield bonus that you're not getting. It's plus four. So this would be a 50, this would be a 38 for those uh, five minutes and those next five minutes. That's not bad. And again, the plus two deflection, wasted. So what? That's not the reason you grabbed it. Uh, also, I should point out, there is another armor we did not show it to you. It's called Sage Armor. It's not ideal. It gives you a nice dodge bonus, which is your touch armor class bonus, if you're under the effect of a shield spell. Well, you can't cast shield. Well, you can now. So again, another viable option. The one that you're probably going to grab, though, let's just be honest, is going to be the one that you have put back together. It's called the Forest Knights Bracers. You have to assemble all the fucking pieces uh, to actually make this. 
or have it crafted for you, I should say. Notice that this basically uh, uh, prevents a lot of problems. So shaken effect, not a problem for you anymore. It's negated and instead of being shaken, now you get a bonus to your attack rolls, your saving throws, and your skill checks for the duration of how long you should have been shaken. Uh, if you should have been frightened or confused, really bad stuff. Remember, we don't have those immunities because we've got a different ring than the, the ones that made us immune to that shit. So what do you do? Well, if this bracer's on, you're not immune to frightened or confused. But what happens, instead of being frightened or confused, it affects you as if you were, they cast hideous laughter on you. So you start laughing and you fall to the ground and blah, blah, blah. But it's not the point. The point is, is you can still defend yourself, unlike frightened or confused, where you can't control your character at all. So that's still powerful. Then, two more things to talk about. One, once a day, it's lame, but once a day you can cast freedom of movement on yourself for one minute. That's not amazing. So that's immunity to paralysis and all kinds of other cool shit. So if you're coming to a fight where you're like, oh, fuck, these bastards keep paralyzing me. Oh, wait, I got the Force Knights Bracers. I can make myself immune. It's only for 10 rounds. But you know what? That's probably enough. And that's amazing. Then, goes further. When Faye tried to hit you, when they successfully do... They had to succeed at a will save or become frightened for one to four rounds. And that's not bad. I mean, it may not land, but it, it has some potential there to fuck the fate over. And those guys are prevalent at the end of the game. So this is the one you're probably going to shoot for. But again, there are other choices. And again, don't discount the braces of armor plus eight. You may be using subpar armor because it gives you a cool fucking buff. Immunity to poison, immunity to fire, the ability to cast fireball. There's a shit ton of armor in this game. You have access to them all. Uh, alignment restrictions may apply. So know that some armor is like, oh, and only if you're lawful neutral or chaotic good or evil son of a bitch or whatever can you put on this armor. So that's an issue. But by and large, we mean the fact that you can wear light, uh, medium, or heavy armor as a fighter. So your choice is my point. And again, sometimes then that this comes in handy. Um, from there, the last thing to talk about before we talk about weapons is miscellaneous. Now, Miscellaneous, you may think, well, what are you going to grab from there? Well, there's these things called quivers under usable items, sorry. And I'm going to give you one of each. That's actually too many because you actually only have five slots and there are six of them. So now what are these little damn things? Well, first, let's go talk to the dragon. Hey, buddy. See my cool shit? I thought it was cool. All right. Now you want to have... Uh, I would do the Ancient Hunt in the main slot, and then from there it's just one, two, three, and four. Notice that we're missing out on one. Again, these burn up the charges very quickly. And you can have more than one of these sets, by the way. You can find multiple ultrasound arrows. I think they're gifts actually from uh, an artisan that she crafts them for you, or he crafts them for you. And as such, they may give you two, three, four of the same fucking ones. You'll be like, Jesus, another one of these? Well, until you fill up all five of these, shut up and take them because you'll burn through the charges on these very quickly. Except for this one. This one has infinite use. Now, the only reason that this is cool is because the infinite use uh, is really only helpful against the Fey. So this is, again, Ancient Hunt, hence the name. You'll use this for when you're fighting Fey targets. Other than that, we have arrows that 20 charges on every last one of these other fuckers. We have extra fire damage on a hit. We have uh, extra electric damage on a hit. And... Uh, increases the chance of critical hit as well as critical damage. I don't know how that does that, but apparently it does. Um, we have a lover arrow here that not only does frost damage and a decent amount of frost damage, that's 2d6 per bolt, uh, but uh, it also allows you to dominate the target. Uh, there's obviously a, a, a saving throw associated with that, I'm sure, for one to six rounds. That's not bad. We have Rose's thorn arrows, another 20 charges. Unholy speed arrows, uh, or bolts per day. Uh, 2d8 of unholy damage and has a chance to weaken the target for one to six rounds as if it were under a curse of weakness spell that's not fucking bad and then of course our last one here the ultrasound errors these are generic fuckers that are just like lame sonic damage but it's one to three damage and that's extra damage that they're probably not resistant to so again just a little bit of gravy on top to fuck a guy over and again you can only have one toggle on at a time again so we have fire damage just to reiterate uh we have shock damage or electric damage we have cold damage we have unholy damage, we have a sonic damage, and then this one here is only extra damage, generically speaking, but again, it's considered lawful cold iron arrows. That is actually useful, or bolts. Uh, and that is useful because that allows you to fuck over the Fey, because Fey have cold iron uh, damage reduction slash cold iron. So cold iron penetrates it. So this is why that one's useful, and the fact that it's infinite use against those guys only. 
is extremely valuable. So those are really, really nice to have. I want to point that out to you. Now let's actually show you, of course, the last thing, which is our weapon. Uh, and our weapon, uh, we're just going to type in crossbow. And some of these things are not crossbows. Uh, but notice we have greater sting, escape is crossbow, ankle breaker, avalanche is not a crossbow. Eye of the tornado, I think, is okay. And again, here's how I can gift myself like hand crossbows and repeating crossbows. But again, in many cases, I don't think these fucking work. So don't bother. Um, I'm always looking for the named fuckers. So the savage bow, that's again not a crossbow. Elemental squall, lawbringer, malice is not a crossbow. I don't know why the hell it's in here. Planner hunter, mist slayer. Those should be good. Yeah, okay. So now here's the ones, in my opinion, uh, that you're going to have. Oh, I need to talk to the dragon. Damn it! Always the dragon. I hate not having knowledge arcana. <laughs> it's just the, it is the bane of my existence. Uh, so what do I recommend? Well, here's a nice solid light crossbow plus five. Notice a couple really good features. I'm sorry, plus three. Why was I thinking this was the plus five? Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, plus three weapon. Notice that it's an outsider bane. And notice that it's got a laundry list of outsiders, whether they're chaotic or evil or good or lawful or neutral. Basically, if it's an outsider, fuck you. We're getting 2d6 of extra damage to those outsiders. And it's like a plus two better swing. Well, that's why I was probably thinking plus five. So it's plus three and plus two is plus five. Uh, only against outsiders, though. Notice the brilliant energy part, though. That's the real selling point here. So if you want to hit something that um, has a good armor class because they have like good armor and good shield bonus you want to take that away brilliant energy attack it does not work however you'll actually see that down here it does not work against undead constructs or objects so don't bother shooting with this okay but the other any other attack this is fucking money and this is probably very late game is my guess uh, other ones that we like miss slayer that's a heavy crossbow i'm going to equip it just to show it to you because it's a monster it's a plus five uh, and it does uh, way good damage because it's a Mist Slayer. Uh, there's actually, I think, a penalty to your swing because of this, though. You know, I take that back. Um, but it does oh, it does more damage. That's what it is. Uh, if you're fighting things that are huge or gargantuan or a dragon or a giant or have 20 or more HD. Yeah, that's where the penalty is. Okay, so when you're fighting those guys, there's more of a penalty to swinging against those dudes. But it does more damage for each of those qualities that they have. So, for example, if it's a gargantuan dragon... That's, that's two things. If it's a gargantuan dragon that has 20 HD, that's three things. Again, you see the appeal here. So suddenly we're doing like a shit ton of damage per bolt to that motherfucker. But this is a heavy crossbow. Again, you're not skilled in it. You're doing fine. Don't kid yourself. But it's still one of those where you're probably better off grabbing the one that you wanted to grab. Here's one. That's a plus five. Uh, plus five axiomatic. An axiomatic, for those of you that don't know, like me. Uh, it's considered lawful, so against chaotic creatures, which are very common in this game. Those are usually the bad guys you fight are chaotic something or neutral something. So just so we're clear. You fight lawful characters as well, too. There's lawful good, lawful neutral, and lawful evil in this game. But basically, it's chaotic or neutral for the primary f first alignment. Um, but it's a, a nice bonus to your chance to do damage on those little bastards. Plus five damage, or uh, enhancement, so plus five to damage, plus five to your swing. Also... Weirdly, removes rage effect. So if there's a, you're fighting barbarians, those fuckers are raging on you. Every time you hit with this, it basically strips them of their rage. And the barbarians rage on a hit, which is kind of trippy. It's not something I'd plan around, but it's definitely there. Greater Sting, on the other hand, is my, probably my favorite. Uh, and there's a couple reasons for this. So one, notice that my modifier went up to times four, not times three. Why did it go up? It's because this is a destructive... Uh, light crossbow. That means the multiplier went up to times three. Well, why is it times four? We had weapon mastery. Remember we're at level 20? So this went up to a times uh, one higher. So if it's times two, now it's times three. If it's times three, just like this one, it's now times four. So when this thing crits, you're going to fucking feel it. Four times that 23 damage there. Yeah, the 1d8 is randomly rolled four times. So it's not like if you roll an eight, it's not going to be eight times four. It's going to be eight, and then it rolls it again, and then it rolls it again, and then it rolls it a, th a fourth time. So it adds all those four die rolls up. So it's more like 48 times or plus 23 times four. So that 80, 92 guaranteed damage on this side of it is fucking sweet when it crits. Uh, and yeah, it does a little acid damage besides. And it does have another uh, thing about it called heavy blow. Let's look up on that. 
When you score a critical this weapon, your opponent becomes stunned for one to four rounds. A successful fortitude save reduces this to the stagger for one round. So again, some bonuses for you. So a staggered effect. And again, remember we have blinding critical. We could have had staggering critical. We could have had um, tiring critical. But the fact that this actually could do the staggered effect or even better, the stun effect, is money. And again, the extra acid damage, phew, that's just fucking sweet. So again, you will like this one, in my opinion. But that's not the only one to grab. Then we still have... I have the tornado, that's a heavy one. Escapist crossbow, that's another light one. Here's a heavy crossbow. Heavy crossbow. So here's your heavy crossbows that are named. Here is your last named light crossbow. And it is a speed shock plus three crossbow that allows you to teleport once a day with Dimension Door. So if you got on the wrong side of the map, you can go, boop, I'm over here now, and continue to wail on bad guys. And the fact that it's a speed weapon gives you that extra precious sixth attack allowing you to do some shit ton of fucking damage and it's shock damage besides and it's still a light crossbow so all the bonuses that you wanted to have still critting really nice still has a nice crit range again you're doing really well for yourself i'm going to gift myself because carrying so many heavy things um some bags of holding okay just to make sure we don't have an encumbrance because i don't want to be penalized when we do stuff, okay? But this would be, again, a typical weapon for me. And again, that's an amazing fuck you weapon for the bad guys. And I think you guys will appreciate that. Now, um, did we put on all our gear? Yes. No. Again, notice that we have no extra wisdom. We did not get the stupid wizard hat. There's other stuff that gives wisdom. There's necklaces, there's hats. I think there might even be a cloak out there that does. So if you really wanted more wisdom, hey, you could have done that thing. Hell, I could turn on wisdom for the ring if I want to get it. just another plus two. Oh, that's the last thing that's missing. I forgot to do my elixir. If this is your main character, you will probably shoot for the elixir of inconceivable transmutations of body and soul and also mind. This thing is a gift from Bakken, and it's a one use and done, permanent plus two to all your stats, uh, your uh, abilities, excuse me. So across the board, and this is why I can finish you with a plus 12, like I said. There's a way to even get this a little bit better, but it would require you not using a crossbow. Um, I want to say it's a sling staff or a, a bow. But this is still a very solid, solid screw you build. Really nice swing potential here. Let's actually take you downstairs. Uh, I'll just do a quick rest over here. Just to make sure everything's rested up. Make sure I don't have a toggle running. Something like that, right? Uh, our other abilities. Prayer at will. This is our freedom of movement. Uh, I'm going to put you over there, like so, and uh, I think that's it. Cool. We're going to go downstairs. I'm going to clear the, the first couple rooms. They're going to be easy fights. That's not the reason I'm doing this. I'm going to clear the room so that I have a big room to fight in, and I'll start spawning some stuff so you can see what the guy is capable of doing. Okay, and again... He is tough. He is not a mortal. So don't think that, again, this is a solo build. So when I start summoning stuff that's like level 10 or 12 and he starts getting his ass handed to him, it's, it's why, because he's not a solo build. Suck it, loser. Alright. Oh, this is a big enough one right here, I'd say. Yeah. Let's unlock the whole room a little bit here so we can see where we're at when we're fighting. Okay. Now. I'm feeling good, feeling super good. Got my armor on and got the weapon of choice, the one that gives me an extra attack. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so uh, again, as a reminder, we got blinding critical. We could have picked something else, but this is a really nice one to get at level 15. This is the one that if you crit, there's going to be a DC check, and I think our DC check is like right around 30. And it straight up screws the bastards where they're just straight up, oh, you're, you're blind. And blind, by the way, for those of you that don't know, if they can be affected by it, because again, if they have no eyes in the first goddamn place, it won't affect them. And they can cure themselves, of course, too. But if they're affected, it's the equivalent of you and your team are invisible to that target at that point. So again, assuming they don't have like blind fight or something else that counters that problem, they are basically fucked. That means they miss you 50% of the time whether they could have hit you or not. Be fucking naked in the breeze. They're still going to swing. There's going to be a 50% die roll chance on a 1D100 where if they roll 50 or lower, nope, they whiff. Doesn't matter how good their shot was. 
If it's above 50, then there's still the chance that they could have penetrated your armor. And again, that's kind of cool. And then, of course, you get all kinds of other bonuses besides because they can't see you get like a bonus to your armor class as well, like a plus two. Uh, or either that or you maybe get like a plus two to your swing. But the point's still the same. Them being blind is definitely a boon for you and your team. So again, blinding critical was why I picked that one of the other ones. Again, staggered is good. Tiring is good. Exhausting is, of course, even better. Um, there's even, I think, stunning critical. I don't even remember how we get that, but it's a possibility. Uh, but just as a reminder, at will, that's why there's no number over it. And again, it's only going to last you for nine rounds or 54 seconds. So again, not an amazing buff, but it is a buff. Uh, or actually, hold on a second, I want to do a quick save. Okay, now let's uh, not gift ourselves stuff. Let's actually give ourselves an enemy. So we spawn units. Oh, just do CR10. And I want to say race. Human. Let's see if that, that pops up. Irvedi. We're Rat Leader. We're Tiger Mercenary. We're Tiger Mercenary Archers. Cultus. Guard. For Daryl, he's the prick. This might be a good one. Make sure he's hostile. Hit spawn. And now the fight should commence. <laughs> All right, now he got the first swing off. And usually when you spawn them like that, they surprise you. So that's why it's really annoying to do this when you have a team, especially if you didn't power level the team up with you and gift them gear as well because they can straight up fucking die. But I'm awesome by myself, and I can handle getting swung at a little bit, especially when you swing with a, a fucking plus 20 little pussy. So um, we can do a five-foot stutter step and walk away and shoot at him, but there is no reason to. Again, remember, we have Point Plank Master with Light Crossbow. So I can just straight up go, fuck you. I wanted to show you, pause it, I wanted to show you the attacks and the damage as well because of the feats that we picked. You're going to find something out that's pretty interesting, in my opinion. Uh, let's grab this. So here's our first swing. Okay, Notice how it's one out of six. Remember, we have that sixth attack thanks to the speed weapon. We have a fifth attack thanks to the fact that we have rapid shot on. Otherwise, you're a fighter. You would only get four because you have a battle of 20. So there'd be a plus 20, a plus 15, a plus 10, and a plus 5, and whatever modifiers you had besides that as far as the bab is concerned. Because rapid shot, we get an extra one, and again, because of the speed weapon or haste, you get another one. So we get the maximum for us is a six. Okay? Not bad. Um, notice point blank shot. Again, we're at in his face, so we get a plus one to our swing. We will also see a plus one to our damage as a result of that. We have weapon focus and greater weapon focus, so a plus two total because of the fact that we're using a light crossbow. Our weapon training and crossbows and any crossbow is a plus four to our swing. That's awesome, and as well as plus four to damage, as you'll see. Rapid shot, we just talked about that. Penalty, minus two, that's offset by the weapon focus and greater weapon focus, in my opinion. Deadly aim is a minus six, but pff, I don't really care. That's a plus 12 damage. Uh, per bolt. And then, of course, we have our escapist crossbow is a plus three weapon, which is what you're seeing there. Now, again, you add all that up, and that's not going to get you to the 41. We're missing other stuff. The other stuff is coming from our gear. So, again, we have, like, well, here, let's just add it. We got 20, 32, 33, 34, 38, 39, 37, 31, 34. I'm missing seven. Two is coming from my uh, headband, the eye patch thing, whatever. And then the five is coming from our gloves. Remember our ranged uh, pr gloves of precise shot. That's a plus five with our ranged weapons. That's why we're as high as we are. And again, I could have cast prayer. That would have been a plus one to my swing. And that would have increased us up to a solid 42. 41 is still a solid fucking screw you by the end of the game. Uh, and again, not the best. But you also have teammates that can buff you in a variety of other ways as well. They could have taken that higher, higher, higher. And remember, we could have switched over to the weapon. Uh, that is the brilliant energy weapon. So these motherfuckers had no armor no shield bonus and that 41 may, may not be as, as impressive but their armor class goes in the fucking toilet and that is impressive so again there's a variety of ways around this but now let's look at the damage we started off 1d8 plus 25 30 piercing damage and of course it does electric damage 1d6 that's not going to get any better that's just a random die roll notice that 33 
We went up to 31 because we're at uh, 25. Let's see, hold on a second. 25. 25. 25. Hey, what the hell? Did I forget to take my feet? Did I forget hammer the gap? I think I did. Oh, I'm such an idiot. My bad. I forgot hammer the gap. <laughs> oh, well, whoopsies. Uh, hammer the gap was one of the ones that would probably be in seven darts. Hammer the gap is the one that I was trying to show you because, again, each one of those shots would have done, uh, you would have seen the, see the plus 25 because it hit. The next one that hits would have been plus 26 because it hit and that one hit because it's consecutive, remember? This one would have been another plus one. So we would have been up to a plus 26, we would have been a plus 27. This one would have been a plus 28 instead of a plus 25. And I remember, we have six attacks. So again, first attack's normal damage, so what you're seeing here. Then this one, uh, plus 0.5 shot, of course. Uh, then the next one would be plus one, do the damage, then plus two to the damage, assuming they all hit. Plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five. So if you add all that up, say one, two, and three is six, and four is 10, and five is 15. That could have added 15 more damage to a target in the combat round if all six shot hit. Back to back to back to back to back. Now sadly, the following round, it resets itself. It doesn't matter if you hit him on the very last shot with this plus 25 here, and then the next round starts and you hit him with this 40, it's back to being the normal damage again. It's per round, and then it resets itself. So Hammer the Gap is useful, and it does work for ranged weapons. That's, I'm pissed off that I forgot to grab that. My bad. Uh, but that's a decent upgrade. Uh, now let's actually um, make a character that has some resistances. Who? Think of, of what I might summon. Let's do just a CR uh, 12. I think the tree it might be. Ah, hell. My bad. Forgot to clear the units. Uh, where'd you go, you little bastard? On him. Okay. Now, hopefully, you don't gnaw my face off before I have a chance to shoot him. Remember, these guys are tough. Just because they're level 12, or CR 12, is not that big of a deal. He just took away all my goddamn mirror images. Now, again, if I try to break from him, you see that little red line there, so he's going to attack me. That's his, his sphere of influence, so to speak. So that's a bad thing. But if I just want to do a five foot stutter step, That's the name of that tune. Uh, but, let's see how we did. 41, not like we're surprised by that. He had a solid armor. And again, this would be the one where the, the um, brilliant energy weapon wouldn't have done this really any good. He doesn't have an armor. He has natural armor. That doesn't count. He doesn't have a shield, so that wouldn't have helped at all. So again, it wouldn't have done any good to hit him with that weapon versus anything else. So just take your quote-unquote best or favorite weapon at that point. But now let's see what we did for damage. I'm not seeing anything that says reduced by. So we, it's not the, the target that we want. So first, before we fight another guy, I want to rest. Wish I could think of a name of something that was resistant. That sucks. Let's do a great cyclops. Oh, let's clear the units. Let's do a great cyclops. Maybe that'll be good enough. You're mean. I hit you. This In the face. Ooh, there's a crit to the blind effect. Oh, that's pretty though. That was super pretty. But I don't think we had any resistant damage on that. Oh, that was some pretty sweet damage though. Now this is I should show you the fortitude save though. Yeah, see the see the DC 30. So again, really nice DC for us. Again, relatively hard for them to pass, and it's a fortitude check. And he did fail it. And again, he could have passed it. He had a 21 on that. He needed a nine or better. So he had a better than a coin toss, and he still fucked it up and went all blind. And because he was blind, it's possible that our attacks was even better. Yeah, he's flat-footed once he's blind. You see that? 
because again, he can't see the attack coming, so it just pop, 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 pop. It's just super easy to hit him at that point. And even the penalty for the blindness as well just really screws them over. Um, I wish I could think of a guy that was resistant, guys. I'm sorry. But I uh, t- trust, uh, I hate to say it this way, but trust that um, it will work and that these, these motherfuckers will take damage um, and you will reduce the damage by 5 or 10, assuming that you grabbed the penetrating strike, the greater penetrating strike. Also remember that we, because we have, where's the clustered shots right here? Because we have the clustered shots in a full combat round, if you hit him more than once in a round, to say it that way, more than once in one combat round, instead of it being damage reduction per hit, it hits and hits, tallies the damage from both of those, and then it subtracts the damage reduction, so only once. So if he has damage reduction 50, most guys aren't hurting him for nothing. But because you can pop, 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 hit him like five, six times in a row, and that's 24 is added each goddamn time you hit him, right? Suddenly you're doing like 500 points of damage or 300 points of damage, whatever. Let's just let's just say 200 points of damage because that's realistic. You did 200 points of damage in a combat round, but because it was spread over several hits because of his damage reduction, that'd be much less for most people. But because of your cluster shots, it would do 200 points of damage, then it would subtract the damage reduction once and once only. And thanks to our uh, penetrating strike and our greater penetrating strike, whatever his DR was, it's lowered by 10. Minimum, of course, of zero. So that does work. Okay. The only mistake I made here is instead of grabbing endurance, I should have grabbed um, hammer the gap. That was my mistake. And it, it, it doesn't add that much more. But it is free damage. And it's one of those where, again, with six attacks in a round, like I said, if all of them hit, I could have added another 15 total points of damage to that motherfucker. That's a lot of extra damage in a combat round against one guy. So he becomes very, very good at just shredding one dude. Okay. Uh, and again, is this the optimum build? Yeah, pretty. It's, it's not the best way of doing it. I could have probably tweaked it in the order of, of feats. But again, write those down. Decide what you wanted uh, and, and when you wanted them. And remember, there's going to be some limitations. Remember, because these ones here are combat feats only. Uh, like in, uh, um, where is it? Iron Will might not be something you can grab down here, for example. But we grabbed it. We grabbed it up here. So again, there's going to be some caveats. Some things have a specific fighter level requirement. Some have a bab requirement. Remember, you get a fighter level and a bab level at each level. So your fighter level 20 here, you have a bab level 20 here as well. So if it's uh, again, was well, a penetrating strike was one that was limited to like level 12, and then greater penetrating strikes, I think you had to be 16. So we could have grabbed that one as soon as here, and this one we could have moved all the way down to probably here. And again, that's on you. When I do these builds, when I when I pick the order of stuff, it's common sense stuff in a lot of places. More than anything, within the first few levels, you have what you need, your kit, so to speak. So again, your rapid shot, your point blank shot, your precise shot was necessary, deadly aim. And honestly, that's about it. Everything else is just extra fluff, making you better at shooting, more damage at shooting, better crit potential, uh, and anything else that you might want to, to flush out, if you will, your character. But really, by like level two, you're pretty much where you need it to be. So anything else is just grab it when you need it. And, and I know that sounds silly, but... For instance, uh, if you don't, if you're not level 12 or higher yet, you can't grab, say, penetrating strike. So let's say at level nine, you're coming across a lot of bad guys. Up, you know, just before you level up, you're coming across a lot of bad guys. You notice that are have on a lot of damage reduction. Really starting to fucking piss you off. So what do you do? Well, that's when you start grabbing things like clustered shots if you can. Because remember, three shots to his chest before it calculates the damage reduction. Does all three damage? Calculates them all together and then subtracts the dr once. That's how Ekendayo suddenly is a monster and everyone else is like floundering. And you're like, Ekendayo's the boss. It's because you grab clustered shots for him more likely than not. And that's really what's selling it. It's not that he's doing like way more damage than everybody with his, his um, deadly aim. He is doing a lot. Don't kid yourself. But it's still not that impressive. It's because of things like clustered shots or penetrating strikes or greater penetrating strikes that he's ignoring a lot of their damage reduction. And he's just like drilling them home. And the fact, of course, he can get like a shit ton of arrows off in a combat round with like many shot. Remember, he can get more than me because many shot would add even another arrow shot. You don't see it here. Where I'm getting six bolts, he would get six arrows plus one more from the very first attack, assuming the first attack hits, which it probably will. It's his best shot, after all. And that's when many shots splits off another arrow. So he could technically get seven fucking arrows into a target where I could get six. And again, 
really good characters. And I, I like this character. I like the fact that I can be light or medium or heavy armor, my choice. I like that I have really good uh, skills with that crossbow. And again, my favorite being the light crossbow. And again, it's not to say, just to re reiterate, there's not to say that there wasn't good heavy crossbows. Again, Mislayer for itself is a fucking monster. And you can get this before the end of the game pretty quickly. You know, quickly-ish compared to some of these other ones. Mislayer was something that I had for Lindsay for a while. Um, Eye of the Tornado, that's not bad. The ability to summon mirror elemental bonus to initiative. It's a shock damaging weapon. And again, same range, same crit range, slightly better damage. That's 1d10 versus 1d8. So again, thematically speaking, what is that? It's like an extra point of damage. That's why heavy crossbows don't impress me. So if your average damage for a, a light crossbow is 4.5, for a heavy crossbow, it's 5.5. Ooh, ring a ding ding. You're crushing me. Bullshit. Who cares? It's what are you going to find? Where are you going to feel more comfortable using? And again, we have really good choices. These ones are still decent. This one here is the, the mean motherfucker. It's plus three. It does all four elements of damage. Fire, cold, electric, and acid. Just 1d6. It's a weird one. It's actually one that I don't even know that I found this in the game. But it is pretty funny. Um, but the ankle breaker, I know I found that early. And this is okay. Um, the chance of slowing the target on a, uh, when you hit the enemy on a hit is not going to land a lot, but it does work. So when you do see it, it is kind of impressive. Uh, having said that, it's only a plus one weapon. If I had the ability to make it a plus five, and like I had a spell casting ability to upgrade the weapon, I would like a magus. I would totally think ankle breaker was fun, but it's not. It's only a plus one. So it literally is kind of like a, a gimmicky little like, ooh, look at this. And then I sell it immediately because it's kind of shit. But there are good heavy crossbows. And, and, and again, just to show you the list of the non-named crossbows. Let's get rid of all this stuff. I just say crossbows again. Look at the list of the normal shit. The masterworks besides. And you got your... And again, ignore the repeating ones. You got corrosives, you got plus ones, plus twos. There's going to be speed ones in here, probably frost and shock and keen and et cetera and so forth. So there's a lot of interesting things in here. They're not that interesting. It's going to be just like a plus weapon, more likely than not. You're going to see crossbow plus four. Yeah, but I got a plus three that sets things on fire. I'd rather do that. I think though that you would like this build, and again, this is an unmodded build, so this is a, a build that anyone can use uh, for, oh my god, uh, I forgot I summoned a guy, apparently I get his gear, um, but this is a build that anybody could use, uh, whether we're talking console or PC, and I think you guys will enjoy it, it's a solid, solid fighter, the fact that you can get by level 1, two attacks in one combat round off, yeah, at a, at a penalty, a minus 2 to your swing is not great, it's not that much of a problem. By the time you get out of the tutorial and over to Oleg's and you're level 2, you're not even really feeling that minus 2. The fact that I'm actually grabbing uh, Deadly Aim at level 2 is probably silly. Honestly, you should grab Weapon Focus because that extra plus 2 of damage is not that impressive. The minus 1 penalty to your swing, though, coupled with a minus 2 penalty from your swing from Rapid Shot, that is bad. That's a minus 3 right there. Yeah, you have a bab of 2, so that's really countering it quite a bit, but it's still a minus one overall. Yeah, we had a dexterity of 18, so again, plus four. We're still at a plus three. A masterwork weapon, though, and a, and a plus one crossbow and, and, and upgrades from there on are always nice. I'd probably push deadly aim back, get weapon focus first, then by level three, grab yourself deadly aim. Uh, and again, weapon specialization and all the other stuff are just fiddly bits that you add later whenever you feel the need. But remember, weapon specialization was needed for our point blank master. So weapon focus was needed for weapon specialization, which was needed for point blank master. So again, a lot of these are going to feel like, oh, then I'll grab this one, oh, and then I'll grab that one, oh, and then I'll, and again, you see it springs boards from there. Solid, solid character. Solid, solid saves. Teammates are going to help as well. He'll be in the back with a lot more health than you think, and just crushing stuff, especially if he's your main. And I think you guys will enjoy this. Now, I'm sure this video has gone on long enough. Of course, I forgot to, to time myself, so this has probably been like five goddamn hours. But with that, my name is Brother Mute. Please like, subscribe, comment down below. Apologies for, for not getting this video out to you sooner. Again, I forget these things. That's why if you know that I said, hey, I would totally do that video for you, just remind me in the comments down below every now and again, hey, you guys working on that one build that you said you do for me? And I'll respond back, which build was that? Oh, it was the elf that did this, that, or the other. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I'll, I'll work on that right now. So... 
post that down below, guys. It does help keep me honest and helps me remind me of all the stuff that I needed to catch up on. But with that, I'll see you guys soon. Bye now.